So hey friends, welcome to this week's video. Finally getting into the drop THX Pandas. I know you guys have been waiting for this, but it did really take me a long time to go through this, especially reading through your comments. You did mention some big things I need to bring up in terms of connecting it to different devices, using various cables. So it's just a lot. It's a lot to unpack here. And I think I'm gonna get most of it in here. I will be separating out a separate video for comparisons to other headphones I have, but for the main review, this will be it. So buckle up, it's gonna be a long one. All right, so usually here I put in, you know, the animated GIFs with the music synchronized specifications. However, that time, that takes a lot of time, a little bit of effort and thought and I don't know about these headphones, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna flash those specs right here so you guys can check them out, so you know what we're getting into. But I'm only as thoughtful as the products that I think are being made, and I'm just not sure about it. So let's get into the review so you can see why I'm being more informal here. Oh, so the construction of the pandas are extremely well done. It, it feels like one cohesive unit. It does have a few different materials on here. All the constructive pieces or the people, the places that make structure are cast aluminum. So that does give it a nice, good feel and cool touch. Um, I believe the headband, however, is plastic, but they do a good job of blending that and giving it this whole matte stealth look. And it doesn't look like it's just a bunch of hodgepodge together. Um, the, the ear cups articulate very nicely, and again, like I mentioned before, there's a good tilt to them, so for different head sizes and shapes, it'll give you a good seal. Um, another good thing about this is the leatherette ear cups. They seem pretty durable. I've actually like thought I scuffed them up, but they've held up even through some wear and tear, and they're soft. They're very, very nice and plush. Um, some of the best that I've seen on a pair of wireless headphones. But then it comes down to the fact it is so well constructed and rigid, that there might be some comfort issues. Um, I stretched these out a lot. I, I wore these a lot. These were gonna be these were my main driver for a whole month, and they still kind of feel rigid and rough. Like I like I, I I literally do this before every listening session just to have like some kind of giveaway and hoping that it will loosen up over time. But they haven't let up too much. I definitely see that there's been a little bit of stretch, but they still clamp like a mother. Like they clamp so hard. Um, I, I'm gonna throw up this pillow test that I did where I, I have a pillow that kind of simulates a head, but it definitely compresses out of the out of on, on that pillow more than let's say like the Sony M1000s. Um, in, in fact, I could just tell because I had no issue getting these on the pillow, but the Sony's would fall off all the time because the clamp wasn't heavy enough. Um, again, that might be good for certain people um, if they like that secure fit, but I could see how you could get some heat issues or ear fatigue or head fatigue on this one. Um, the headband also isn't like plush. There's no like Alcantara like you might see on um, like, a, a, like a Bose setup um, or there's no leatherette with some plush in there. This is very similar to what you saw on the neural phone where there's just a, a silicone um, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a plastic band that, that um, has like a little bit of give, there's like a little bit of sponge to it, but not too much. So you're really on that, that headband heavily. So if you have a bigger head, I could see that you might have some hotspot issues. So like wearing these, um, if you did wear them close to the head, you can definitely feel that on top. And like the headphone itself is heavier than most of the competition out there. They're heavier than the neurophones. So you're gonna feel it on your head. You're gonna, it's gonna be noticeable. And if you're using a configuration where there's a lot of uh, space, not space, a lot of pressure on your head or your, your, yeah, on the top of your head, you're gonna feel that over time, especially over long listening sessions. However, there are some ways to resolve that. And like, I think a lot of people are saying that you want to make sure that the uh, pressure is on your ears rather than your head so you don't get those hot spots. So you, I loosen up the headband a bit, making sure that those, it's very light on the top of the head and then really ear bearing in terms of the weight. Um, the thing that I would say about that is that's fine. Yeah, that actually, that does clear up your the pain on top of your head. However, it does cause some compression, at least here for me. Like I can feel it here, like it's really sticking in. And over time it gets annoying. So like I do have to take them off, let my ears rest for a bit. So there's still that compression and it's weird to have no headband support um, and you, them really being ear, um, 
bound. I think that's the reason why I had some issues with the neurophones is because, yeah, everything was on the ears and just my ears got tired. Um, so that's one thing. So there might be some comfort issues with these for a lot of you. Um, so I, that's something to keep in mind when purchasing these. Um, again, I'm gonna just keep trying to stretch them out and see if they get better, but these have stood, stood strong. So that's something to keep in mind uh, that you're gonna have to break these in heavily. So in terms of Bluetooth connectivity and controls, you're gonna get overall a pretty good experience. Nothing much to complain around here. You're getting Bluetooth 5.0, and that means that you're gonna get great range, connectivity between devices, and pretty solid Aptex control. So the Aptex that they're using for this one is HD, because obviously they wanna emphasize the best possible sound. However, you're not really gonna have issues with latency when you're watching videos or movies anyway. So watching a YouTube, watching a podcast, whatever you might be doing, I didn't really notice all that much latency at all. So you can get that full experience. Um, the things that I did notice is obviously around uh, a little bit of annoyance of connecting between devices. So it does remember multiple devices. However, there's not a great way to switch between them um, because there's no app and they don't have something advanced like Jabra where it just automatically can kind of pick up if they realize that one other is playing. You do have to go into the settings and switch. That's a little bit annoying. As well as when you're trying to activate or sync a new device, you have to power these things off completely, which is super, super annoying. So um, that's something that they could definitely improve upon. I'm hoping with the introduction of the app that comes along with that, similar to what Sennheiser did. Um, the other things that I would probably say that I noticed was an issue with the Bluetooth connectivity was cold weather, ironically. Um, it's been getting colder here in Boston and I was running, doing errands on my one wheel, getting groceries. Uh, just had some issues with cutting out. Like I, I saw in the comments that people had issues with, with choppy Bluetooth connectivity or cutting out or like getting disconnected. And I never really had an issue with that indoors. And obviously I was doing a lot of testing indoors. However, as the temperatures dropped and I was doing stuff outside, that was an issue, surprisingly. So I'm not sure, it's definitely not like an, oh, I'm outside issue. Um, I think it has to be do with the cold. It has to be because it was just when Boston started getting in the temperatures of uh, 30s that I'm starting to see those issues. And it's pretty consistent. So. Um, not exactly sure if it's my unit or not, but I'm hoping that most people don't have that problem, but that's the only trend that I can see this far. Not necessarily the truth there, just an observation. So it's anecdotal. Take that with a grain of salt. Um, in terms of the controls, again, I love this control setup. So the, uh, I don't even know what you call this, the nipple? I think that's the only way to put it. The nipple has like a direction to it where this is something that I really, really like. It's the most accurate, it's the most accurate controls that I've gotten. The various controls that we normally get are like the Bowers and Winkles P7s, where it's like up and down with a middle button where you can interact with that. Um, you get touch controls um, with some other buttons, or you get two buttons where, you know, you have multiple presses to access your gestures. So that's all very well and fine. However, these are the most accurate touch screens or some touch pads. You have, you know, miss swipes or, you know, water can get into it and affect it. Taps and double taps can be finicky depending on how refined that system is. And then having more buttons, obviously those are, those are the best in terms of what they've, we've seen this far. Um, but again, you still have double taps and triple taps, which is kind of annoying. However, this one resolves most of it because a lot can be done with that nipple by being able to make it toggle up and down and it's still tactile. So I've had the most accurate response for playback controls and access to, to different functions through this. So this is that's probably the best feature um, in terms of the overall build for me. That's my favorite. And I think more headphone companies should introduce that. Um, I, you know, I can use this in the kitchen with no issues. Uh, I use that, I mean, I use it um, going out. So like, it's just super helpful to not have to worry about the environment getting in the way or, you know, like guessing if I'm getting the, the double click right or spacing it out. It's just click it in the direction I want it to go and it'll happen immediately. So there's just no waiting. And I, I love that. So day in the life, I really tried to run these through as much as I could in terms of everything that I normally do in my day, as well as keep them on my head as long as I could without having to, you know, outside of showers, of course. <laughs> but in terms of like podcasts, in terms of music, conferences, running around the city, do the whole thing with these headphones on, you know, 
try to use the onboard controls as much as possible and you know switch between wired and unwired connections um, just to really see how they perform so overall i think these are very admirable they, they performed admirably um, they're definitely serviceable for a multitude of situations i would just say like again as i mentioned in my previous part switching between devices is not as seamless as i would like it to be as well as getting new devices on is a little bit annoyance again hopefully this is stuff that you can fix in firmware or with an app um, that will help facilitate those connections outside of that again overall pretty good so the next parts are really around like it's really dependent on how it's shaped on your head and your personal lifestyle in terms of what you're expecting from these headphones um, so in terms of the actual you know usability from the day to day i would say that i never really had issues with batteries i didn't have to worry about is it gonna die it always it, it always charged basically like I, I i think i charged it like a, a few times through this entire review and i think it's a lot of that is because i used it wired a lot for conferences so i would plug into my computer and use my vmoto boom mic to do most of my conferences and it seems like when it's plugged in it's not using any power so it's just using computer power to power the headphones and it's not really uh, draining the battery inside the headphone because I never had an issue of like me being on like a six hour call and then my headphones being dead or even close, like showing low battery signs. I would just turn it on and it's like I left it when I was using the Bluetooth last time. So again, super dope on that perspective. So it does project 30 hours. I have no doubt that it would meet that. However, I don't think you could keep it on your head that long. And that's because I, I, I use this for everything, as I mentioned, but I would get fatigue at around three to four hours. And again, I think that's just because of the weight and the clamp of these headphones. Uh, it's a little bit, not a little bit, it's pretty noticeable. So these are heavier than most of the competitors for the wireless headphone market. And the clamp is pretty severe. That clamp, again, even with the adjustments that I tried, still weighed on my ears and I, I got either heat issues where I needed to just take a break or my ears just got fatigued from being compressed. So yeah, when I think of audiophile headphones, I think of things that you can work on for hours, like go through discography and not really have to worry about uh, those sort of pain points. So like my big Sennies, um, I don't have to worry about that, but they are wired, you know? So there's a bunch of other things with that, but yeah, these ones are just heavier and maybe that's the amplifier inside of it that's supposed to be driving all this quality, but they are heavier, they clamp like a mother and you're gonna feel that. So as much as you can use these all day, um, from a technical standpoint, you may not be able to do that from a comfort standpoint. Um, the next part would probably be, um, this, is like, this is more like me. So I work in client situations and generally in large offices. So. Um, for me, I did notice that there was sort of an isolation issue. So I would like wear these like flat on the table or put these flat on the table and I would notice, notice that sound would leak out. And I get it, these are passive headphones or they don't have any ANC or anything to do anything like that. But I would expect a little bit more isolation um, because I've seen other headphones do that. Um, where they don't, they, the, the seal's just there and I don't disturb anyone. So these probably wouldn't be headphones that I would just rock out at full volume. I would probably be more cognizant in an office setting um, of like how, how loud my volume would be. And then I guess that kind of works inversely where also I didn't get much isolation in terms of my personal listening environment. So the cities are quieter now. So when things pick up, I would be a little bit concerned because I'm hearing white noise when I'm on my one wheel or using other modes of transportation. If things were to, to pick up again, I would be concerned how much noise that comes in and again, Normally I wouldn't be I wouldn't be tripping because it doesn't have ANC, but I've seen other headphones passively isolate noise better. So again, isolation depending on what you need might be an issue, but again, inside a home, you're not really gonna have all that much problem, especially if you're using these just like for home or office or like personal office. Um, shouldn't have that much issue. In terms of the microphones, they perform pretty well. My clients like the sound of them and they worked well, both wired and Bluetooth. And I'm gonna put in some samples here so that you guys can understand the difference, um, use them between a couple devices and uh, hopefully you guys understand. So this is me connected to my PC using Bluetooth. So this is just the onboard microphones on the Pandas with no any sort of amplification or anything. 
think what you'll notice here is that my voice is pretty empty sounding or pretty hollow sounding any bass in my voice or any sort of you know anything that's lower tone you probably won't hear it as much it'll probably be a brighter tone and again have that hollow sort of signature to it um, I think that you'll see that once I add the wired connection there will be some more color in the voice for this one it's pretty bland and generic but it's serviceable so like again for calls um, anything that's just you know casual conversation it'll do that it'll work for that um, you won't have any clarity issues you just may not get that color in your voice or a good representation of the aberrations and character of your voice as the wired connection will do. So this is a wired connection microphone connected to the Panda so you get an understanding of how this sounds versus the Bluetooth. I had this microphone, the Vmoto Boom Pro, before I did the pre-order for Panda. And initially when Panda released, they didn't have their own uh, Boom microphone as an add-on. However, they added that later in the campaign. At the time, I didn't opt in to add that addition, so by the time I changed my mind, I had already been too late. I do kind of wish I did get it just to get the full experience, you know, with their cabling and their whole sort of kit and caboodle all in one to get a full review on here. However, the Vmoto Pro uh, seems to be working pretty well. It has no, you know, compatibility issues. It performs very well on VoIP calls and, you know, like Microsoft Teams, Zoom, uh, Discord, all sounds pretty good. Um, my voice might come in, come in a little bit bright, but that's actually pretty good for clarity. But I've had no complaints from my friends or my clients, and they think it sounds pretty well. So you can tell me what you think in the comments. Sound. It's the whole reason why we're here, right? This whole headphone is about superior sound. At least it purports that. Every design decision that they've made, from the 55mm planar ribbon to the THX amplification, to the, you know, not adding A and C to make sure that the quality is of the highest using Aptex HD. Everything was around improving the sound so that you get the best experience in a wireless headphone. And I think they've done a pretty good job about that. There are certain things that we've talked about where, you know, they may not have, they may not have the right uh, mix for certain things to where you, of where you live or what you do, but sound is supposed to be where this shines the most. And I will say like it is, it has achieved that to an extent. So overall signature, you know, regardless of wired or unwired, which we'll get into later, is very mid and treble focused. I think there's a nice sparkle to these headphones and there's a ton of detail in terms of, you know, certain instruments, in, in, when you have like really complex compositions when there's a lot of instruments, a lot of drums, a lot of stuff happening, um, I think you're gonna really appreciate that more. I think songs like uh, Clean Bandits, uh, Rather Be, that uh, violin comes in so nicely. And I think that's because these, these are very vocal forward headphones and they, they do a good job about emphasizing that to make sure that every single detail is in there. A lot of songs by Louis Del Mar also perform very well in this scenario. Um, Louis Del Mar occasionally puts in really complex drums or like really like like unorthodox drums and they, they do come in well and they come in clear. They don't sound muddy like they do in some other headphones. So I really appreciate it in that. Um, I think where some people will question it a lot will be bass um i think for from the bass perspective it's it's more muted um it's 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 sharp in terms of like you know that there is uh the the lower tones there's the, the bass hits you feel them they're there they just don't hit as hard as other headphones i think that's you know the industry generally goes towards a more bass heavy sound to make it more well-rounded less harsh um you know and really just ground it so i guess like most of the headphones we hear are more bass heavy because it's safe um, but I think a lot of people especially for casual listeners they'll see that this is lacking um, that was probably the first thing that I I, I recognized uh, when I listen to these is because like I listen to a lot of hip-hop a lot of R&B so that's really important and I feel like some of those songs didn't give me the same energy because they were missing that sort of thump to them um, if we're going beyond music um, I do kind of think that 
uh, in podcasts. It really depends who you're listening to. Um, so I, that's also like where I kind of noticed that the thump isn't there. So like I, to me, Joe Rogan and some of his, and like, you know, like Joey Diaz, some of his guests have like lower voices. So those were, they sounded a little bit higher. Uh, so like it was just a little bit noticeable since I've, I listened to a lot of their stuff and they just sounded a little bit higher than normal. And I also noticed that if you had guests with higher voices, they had a tendency to potentially be a little bit harsh. Um, and this is kind of also, if you watched our podcast on Nate Robinson, where when I was monitoring using these headphones, I came in higher than I sounded on the actual recording. So when I actually put that recording into my editing and I used a different set of headphones, I used my speakers, I was at, you know, how I sound now. However, when I was monitoring, I was, I was actively monitoring using those headphones during that podcast and I felt like I was coming in harsh. So Carter's voice came in nicely because he has a lower voice, so it did pitch it up, but it didn't sound harsh because he has a lower tone than I do. However, when I was monitoring mine, I was like wondering if it, like my mic was off or something was happening with the balancing of my Zoom, my Zoom, or Zoom, yeah. But uh, it wasn't, it was just the fact that my headphones tuned our voices in that sense. So I think you're safe with with music because obviously the, the background track will round off a lot of those sounds. And you know, when you're singing, you generally have more rounded. I think when you start listening to podcasts, you need to be very cognizant of who you're listening to because there's a potential that will come in harsh um, and you might not be able to listen to that podcast the same way as you did. So there is a lot of things to consider with the sound signature here. Again, it's one of the most detailed in terms of mids and trebles that I've had. And I, I really appreciate being able to discern the different instruments and really feel that snare and feel those, those strings, like especially with violins and cello stuff, I love it. But again, if you're looking for bass, you're gonna miss that thump. And if you're doing just spoken word, there's a potential that it may come out harsh. So it's a little bit difficult, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a separate video um, comparing the pandas to other headphones and going to use a, a you know different tracks um, that i think that will be good to represent it um, such as some music from Louis del mar um, to kind of help describe that in a little bit better fashion however what i would like from you guys is if you could comment the disc or if you could add your own comment in the comment section of songs that you want me to run that test through i think it would be cool to get you know get some new music to listen to but also like input what you guys would be interested to look for in, in terms of the comparison between those headphones so if you can put that down there we'll go but um there are some other considerations outside of just the pure sound signature of this headphone of how things sound on bluetooth how things sound powered through my computer and how things are amplified so like these are things that i've kind of went through um not only reading through your comments which are super helpful but also just like going through my my old, my day to day i've noticed some differences in performance based on what the source is so let's get into that bluetooth connection to phone was smooth and you get very nice sounds over that connection the details and sharpness are there and vocals are very forward however the thing that is most of concern is volume i could get at a hundred percent and still feel like there are a few more notches especially for certain songs or anything that's quieter Compared to other headphones, I didn't feel much fidelity loss, but bass will definitely take a back seat. Now as we move to Bluetooth over PC connection, that's where things get really strange. Okay, sorry for this being a little bit more informal, but someone did mention in the comments that they had some issues with audio connecting to the computer, both through the wire and through Bluetooth. So this part's gonna be about the Bluetooth section of it. I figured I'd just get a live reaction just to see how this actually takes, but apparently it was having problems. So I'm gonna connect this to my computer real quick and hopefully get a sample of how this sounds. No. No, it's... It's so bad. Why is it so bad? Why is it so bad? It's... Yo, this is worse than a Zoom call. This is worse than a Microsoft Teams call. This is worse than a Skype call. 
It sounds so robotic. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna get my microphone so you guys can hear how trash this is. One second. All right, so I got this kind of setup. It's a little goofy, but I'm gonna start recording on this. I couldn't even hear that from like, that That was bad even far away. But this makes me think, is it my PC? I mean, I just, I have a freaking dedicated Bluetooth card, so it shouldn't be that bad. But let me check what this is like on my Mac. So, let's go. Okay. So my Mac, it's fine. Still sounds sweet. No big issues. Volume issue is not really a big issue. So that makes me wonder is it my PC that's broken and not necessarily these headphones? Well, let's verify. So these are Sony M1000Xs, the first generation. I know, right? We're on four, generation four. That's how old I am. Um, but yeah, let's see if this works on my PC and see if it's a Bluetooth issue or. If Panda has some very specific needs for your Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's fine with the Sony's. So I don't know. I don't know what that is. Um, it's baffling to me because I don't get it. These are running Bluetooth 5.0. This MacBook 2018 Touch Bar also running Bluetooth 5.0. The wire or the bluetooth card that i have in my pc is the latest from tp link which is a wi-fi 6 bluetooth 5.0 adapter and these are bluetooth 4.1 on the mac both of these sound fine on my pc these sound really bad and these sound normal i don't know what that what that is if you guys understand what the issue is, like is this a Kodak issue, put it in the comments I have no idea what that is, but these don't sound great on my PC for some reason, despite having a really updated Bluetooth card. So I'm not sure if there's something really specific about what the needs are, but if I wasn't very clear before, it sounded like it was underwater. It sounded like when you start losing connectivity on a call and people's voices get robotic and it starts skipping out, that's how it sounded. I tried it on YouTube Music, I tried it on YouTube, I tried it on just native files on my computer and everything sounded choppy and robotic and I couldn't, I, I don't know why. Again, on the Mac, there's not really that many issues, but these shouldn't be outperforming this in Bluetooth. That doesn't make any sense. But that's that's something that I found. Hopefully it's just my unit, not overall everyone's issue, but I would like to hear if you guys are having those issues. Very surprising. Getting to the wired connection performance, the sound signature is very similar of how it was over Bluetooth. Connecting through my phone directly, I had similar sonic performance, but also similar volume issues. 75% is when it starts getting to normal volume, and 100% is a pleasant loudness. It just doesn't have the ability to push more volume if you needed that extra oomph for a song or added volume to isolate outside noises. Connection to my PC's motherboard did yield slightly better results. I noticed brighter tones and slightly better volume performance. However, I still felt like the volume was an issue and I wished that there were a few more notches to accommodate for different music or speakers. I decided to test out my 2i2 and see if that yielded any better results. And to me, that gave me so much more control over my music from a volume perspective. Even at 25% on my 2i2, it was noticeably louder than when not amped. I felt like I could hear more detail and things came out cleaner. This cleaner sound could also be due to the fact that I was using the included cord with my 2i2, but more likely it's the fact that more power could be used on the headphones and there was just more volume control so I could hear more things that I may have missed at lower volumes. So out of curiosity, I rebirthed my dark voice tube amp and decided to see how much better things could be with proper amplification. At this point, I had given up on the fact that the THX amplification inside the Pandas can give me the performance that 
is expected on its own. So why not throw something at it that is probably overkill? So let's plug everything in, let's warm up these tubes, and see what we can get. Immediately you can tell that these sound better even with minimal levels from the amp. Everything just seems more powerful and crisp. Vocals and strings hit different, and the instrument separation is beautiful. It doesn't help with bass thump or warming out voices, but it definitely makes sure that you hear everything and don't miss a sound. So much better. So much better. I don't know, guys, I don't know. Like, I like them. Don't get me wrong, I like them. They're extremely detailed. I think they're great for movies. Watching movies, awesome, um, especially if there's a lot of action going on. There's not a ton of dialogue with no music. You know, like anything that has a high pace or high drama kind of thing would be great. And again, if you're listening to music with a lot of detail or complex instruments, um, complex compositions, uh, hi-hats, strings, those come through extremely detailed. Some of the best I've heard from mids and highs. However, if you are a bass head, I, I do think that you're going to be lacking in that thump that you probably are used to or that you're wanting. These don't hit the same way as some of the other headphones out there do. And that might just be because they want to emphasize the detail so much, but I was sort of lacking with certain genres of music. The other things that I've seen with it are are, are frustrating. Like, like the fact that they have this amp that they market as being the thing that makes this so good, the whole THX amplifier part of it. But I still need to amp it. So like on the Bluetooth side, if I'm using my phone again, 80% is when I start getting a volume that I like and 100% it's loud, but it's not like any, anything harsh or anything where I'm like worried that my ears are gonna break. And again, like for me, I like my music softer, but uh, so I know some people that want their music to be louder. So that, that's another issue for me is that like, there's no option to get louder unless I amp it, meaning that I'd have to have a cable connection. And even with that cable connection, it's not great through my phone. My phone just can't drive that even with an LDAC in there. It would need like an onboard dedicated amplifier. Again, there's pocket options, but again, that's not what I, it, it has it in the headphone. It's supposed to be able to do that. So that's a little bit disappointing. And then even with the cabled experience, for my computer, it's not the loudest thing if I'm just dire directly going into my motherboard. However, if I do have an amp like my 2i2 or my my dark voice, it, it's great. I have all the options for volume and, and it actually sounds a lot more clear and there's a lot more depth to that noise using those amplifiers. But they market it as having an amplifier in it, so that's why it's confusing for me because I think it should be there. And then there's just like other things with, with just performance issues that I'm not impressed with, like cold weather performance of Bluetooth cutting out. And I mean, the controls are great. Like, I love the controls. I mentioned that in the review. What else is there? There's just certain things. And then it, the comfort is just not the perfect thing. Like, again, this is an audiophile headphone that is designed to, you know, really appeal to those people. Let them hear every detail, everything, be able to monitor with it. However, I can't wear it for a very long time. I can definitely wear a long time in terms of battery life. However, its clamp is super severe. <laughs> and I don't, I can't imagine myself wearing it for more than four hours. So if I'm really trying to use this as my, as my driving force, I don't know if I can. I, I feel like the clamp is so intense that it's gonna take any, thing away that I would want to do that with. So all the promises that we got from this is, is a little bit disappointing. And then on top of that, we were supposed to be able to tone or tune the whole thing with an application and that hasn't released. So like, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna take the approach similar to like with the neural loops. I think that if you want to opt into this, you have to be patient with it. You have to be patient and then really believe that they're going to listen to everybody and, and follow up on these things. However, I don't have as much experience with Drop and THX as I do with Neura. Neura, I know that they're constantly listening to their audience. They're 
everything that they release has them in mind. Their firmware updates make sense of why they're doing that. However, with Drop, there's a bunch of mixed reviews of how they do with customer service. And again, I don't know how this whole thing, because it came through a uh, Kickstarter how, or Indiegogo, how this is all gonna play out in terms of their follow through with all this stuff. So if you're really considering these, I just say tread lightly, tread carefully. Be, sh be sure that you're ready for the risk because there is a risk with these headphones. They are $400 right now. And to me, that's a hard, that's a heavy risk with so many things that are, are you know, not there yet. So if you're really considering these, I would think about waiting until some of this stuff comes out um, and see if things improve. You know, maybe like the second batch of units are better. You know, maybe that app comes out and resolves a lot of issues, firmware updates, but I would wait. I don't think that right now is a good time to buy it unless you really want to be one of those early adopters, review it, you know, put your opinion out there. But if I was, you know, on the fence on this right now, I didn't know if I want to buy it, I would wait. It's just, to me, it's not worth losing out on $400 for something that may not get better. I'm really hoping they do. There's a lot of things that are redeeming about that head headphone. However, I, I, I can't let you guys do that right now. I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep updates on it. Like, I'll do the same thing like I did with the Jabras and the Nuras and all that other sort of stuff. I will have follow-ups in a month, two months, whatever. Any major updates with the firmware or even when the when the app drops, I'll put that in there for y'all. But for now, I just wait. <laughs> like, I can't em emphasize that enough. So I think that's my overall thoughts. Again, I will be doing further reviews on this stuff. So keep in mind, if you want to keep track of the pandas, I'll have some content throughout, but definitely one coming up is going to be reviewing it with some headphones, some Bluetooth headphones that I have in my collection and on me right now. Um, just to get you an understanding of songs that you like. So again, as I mentioned before, if you like a song for me to review these headphones with, and especially the Pandas, throw them my way. I'll check them out and I'll tell you how they compare. But anyway, thank you guys for so much for this long video. At least I'm assuming it's long based on how much film I've already shot. Um, but I know it's been a long one, but thank you for sticking out with me. Anyway, guys, I've appreciated all of the engagement. We are really like around 600 right now, and that was really quick. I think we hit 500 like three weeks ago. So super dope that you guys have been accelerating your engagement with me and I, I love it. But uh, yeah, let's keep going. Thank you to my new subscribers. Welcome back my old subscribers. But as you know, please like, comment, subscribe. Do all the things that you normally do on a video that you like and love. And so I appreciate you. Peace. See you next week.